Okay, the next couple of problems we're going to take a look at now involve something where we don't have a regular single theta inside. We have some other number uh, in front of it. So these involve a little bit different process. We'll take a look at a couple of these kind of examples. This one does not have an interval given to us, so we don't have 0 to 2 pi or 0 to 3 to 360. So in this case, our answers in this case will have to involve a k value, either a 2 pi k if we do it in radians or a 360 k if we want to do it in degrees. So I'm going to do this one uh, in degrees for you, and we have to put k values in this one. So first, we, we know that our trig function is already going to be isolated for us already. And what we do is we look at the table here and we see where, where one half is. And we go down there and we see that one half falls here. That refers to a reference angle of 60 degrees. So I know that 60 degrees is one of my angles right here. I'm going to go ahead and draw that on my unit circle. 60 degrees is here. And you want to find the other spot where cosine uh, is positive and that's going to be down here in the fourth quadrant and you know, all students take calculus cosines positive down here That means I'm gonna have another answer down below here. That's going to be uh, 60 degrees Both of these would have the same x value. So I have two answers. I would have 60 degrees uh, Here as one of the an answers, but then down below here. That's going to be 360 minus 60 so 360 minus 60 is going to be uh, 300. Okay. Now remember, for these, okay, we need to add the uh, instead of 2 pi k, we're going to add 360 because we're dealing with degrees here. So I need to add 360 k uh, to each one because again, I have no interval. Uh, for these kind of problems, actually, any kind of problem that has a number in front of theta, whether it says interval or no interval we actually still want to set it up the same way. The next example we'll take a look at is one where we actually have an interval. We're actually still going to set it up exactly the same way to here. Now, these are not going to be our answers. The reason why, I did the entire problem assuming that there was just a regular theta there, and that's how you always want to start the problem out. However, inside here, there's a 2 theta. So therefore, you want to actually set both of these equal to 2 theta because that's what's really inside there. And then we're going to divide the entire equation through by 2 to get the actual value for theta because we're solving for theta, not for 2 theta. So again, originally inside there was a 2 theta. That's why we have each of those equal to what we've already set up already. Even though we did use the inner circle, that's okay to, to do as is, but then we have to go ahead and do this last step. That's the one extra thing you have to do on these problems. Now, everything here has to be divided by 2. So we get 30 degrees plus 180k. Okay, so we, that, that right there is the answer to the question. We divide everything through by 2. 60 divided by 2, you get 30. 360 divided by 2, 180. We got to do the same thing for this one down below, and we get theta is equal to, uh, again, we're going to divide everything by 2. 300 divided by 2, 150. 360 divided by 2, 180 again. So these right here, this is going to be uh, my, my two answers. 30 degrees plus 180k and 150 plus 180k. Remember the k value uh, represents multiple revolutions. Your k could be 1, 2, or 3. So if the question asks you to go continue and find some exact solutions to this, then what you could do is you can make k equals 0 and get a solution, k equals 2, k equals 3, and so forth, and you can generate uh, different solutions based on this, and that's what we're going to have to do on the next couple problems.